Welcome back to my Let's Play of Orbiter. Um, as you can see, we are back in Orbiter, and we are going to be powering up the Dragonfly, and as I do this, I will just briefly summarize what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Um, if you did not want to hear me read the entire manual. So first, let's go inside. Um, this is the Dragonfly. I wonder if there's a virtual cockpit. There's not a virtual cockpit. This is a Dragonfly. This is the main panel. If you go control up, you see the ECLSS panel. Um, if you go to the right, you see the antenna panel. And if you go to the left, you see the electrical panel. Um, you can see why this would require a manual. Although they took time to label everything, it might be wondering what TK Heater's Cryo-02 means. Well, I assume it means it's cold, but they're heating it up. But you might be wondering why. Anyway, so it is currently, or we are currently unpowered. Um, as you can see, everything's dark except for this. And these little red lights are on, which means the electrical system is not functioning properly, and the ECLSS system is not functioning properly. And ECLS is the life support. So it's pretty bad that that's not functioning properly. Um, so here's the Dragonfly. It is a little orbital tug. Um, here you see RCS um, systems on the side, and two little antenna on top, and a little docking port, and a bunch of tanks for um, storing stuff. So let's get this thing powered up. Um, let's go to the electrical systems. So the electrical system is divided into uh, um, hydrogen and oxygen, and they react to form electricity and water, and that water is then recycled as coolant. Um, for the whole system. Um, so we have two fuel cells that do this, fuel cell one and two. You only need one of them to run. Electricity then goes through um, direct current buses and an alternating current buses to feed the various systems, both of which are not functioning properly. And FC1 load means that FC1 doesn't have anything running on it, which is generally a bad thing. Uh, here we have circuit breakers. Um, BTLD means battery load, which means if you push it in, you can use that to charge the battery. And these two are the HRTS and fan for the ECLSS system. Um, power routing sets the um, power for DC1, DC2, and AC1 to either FC1 on the bottom, or DC1 for the AC bus. Battery, or FC2 on the top, or DC2 for uh, the AC1 bus. Um, so reactants, which are the oxygen and hydrogen, are stored into three tanks. Um, thus we have three switches. This is the most common operating position, is up, up, down. Which means tanks one and two are supplying. Tank three is kind of a backup, so if something happens to tank one and two, we still have fuel. Crossfeed means um, if this switch is up, that means tanks one and two, I believe, are um, providing reactants to the fuel cell. This one means, hang on, I know this. Um, this, this is one and three, and this is two and three, so both of all of these mean one, two, and three are providing. And here we have reactant valves, which mean that it's the same operating procedure. Um, oxygen is also cycled through to the ECLS system, so that's how we get oxygen to breathe as well. Um, so without further ado, I've wasted a lot enough time as it is, I will get this started up. So first we should probably get some power in on the DC and AC so we can get this all started. So you flip these to the battery, because that's the only thing that's providing, or that we can provide power at the moment. Uh, make sure the circuit breakers are pushed in. MN um, correlates to the DC buses. And then down here we have the trip. The auto trip being up means that if the power load gets too high, it will automatically trip the circuit breakers before anything bad happens. Um, so let's um, reset all of these circuit breakers, and you notice that not only did these lights turn off, but now we have 
flow going from the battery. And here we have a battery load indicator, and it will go down slowly, but it will go down and eventually run out, and then that would be bad. Um, so, the tank heaters, I'll get to that once we've started up. Um, the fuel cell, or the fuel, yeah, the fuel cells um, convert hydrogen and oxygen into water and electricity, and also produces heat, which you can um, monitor here. And uh, this is actually good. Um, everything's all set up for us to start it up. So you just hold the button in the start position. Um, left click is going up with these switches. Right click goes down. And you notice the volts are starting to rise as the reactants get forced in there and it slowly takes over until the talkback indicators, which are these things, turn white, which means that the power coming out of the fuel cell is enough to sustain the reaction and thus we don't need to hold the start button. Um, so there we go and now we can uh, redirect so you can see the battery is already drained a bit. We can redirect the power routing to fuel cell 1 and you mo notice that FC1 LD turns off because we are now putting a load on it and then we can put AC1 to DC1 because that is well, it can be anything. But there we go. So now that is off. Let's um, push in these circuit breakers for the fan and turn the... Nah, I won't do that actually now. Um, so as time goes on, the stack heating will go up. This grams per second will go up as um, impurities enter fuel cell 1 until it finally shuts down. O2 H2O waste tank pressure will go up. Um, fuel pH will go up. If it gets above 1.5, you generally have badness. And here we measure quantity and the pressure. Um, that's what the tank heaters are for. Um, as the cryo would indicate, these um, reactants are stored under, or very cold. And so as they get drained, they get heated up, and that thus increases the pressure and keeps it at operating pressure. If it gets too pressurized, we have OVB dumps, which um, automatically trip if the pressure gets too high and it dumps the reactants quickly. Which, yes, it wastes fuel. Um, so, it's just a safety measure. So, that's all working fine now, actually. Um, let's go back up, or here we can see the electrical system is um, the electrical light is off, and everything's all glowing now, which is happy. So let's go up here. Um, this is the life support system. Um, same thing with nitrogen. Um, oxygen actually goes through... So like I said over here, um, the oxygen is stored under cryo, which means it's very cold and liquid, which is usually not a good thing to enter into your environment. Um, not only is liquid oxygen extremely cold, it's extremely corrosive. So here you have O2R1 and O2R2, which um, warm up the oxygen before pumping it directly into the um, environment systems. Um, here you have partial pressure. So O2 partial pressure is at about 25-ish um, kPa. Nitrogen partial pressure is a lot higher. CO2 is understandably low, and the total is at about 100 and, was that, 125? Seems a bit high. Um, normal pressure at sea level is um, 121 kp or er, 101 kPa. So that's just the partial pressure. Keep an eye on things. Um, nitrogen flow, if you have like a leak and you need to um, repressurize the cabin, nitrogen flow is that. Um, R1 and R2 temperatures. So R1 heats up the liquid oxygen into a gaseous state, and R2 warms that gaseous state into something that's not going to, you know, form snow. Um, ambient temperatures at a nice, you know, 20 some degrees, which is pleasant. Ambient delta P tells you whether you have a leak. If it's down, that means you have a leak, and you should probably find it. If it's up, that means you're getting pressurized, which is generally a good thing. 
And fan delta P means that the air is circulating, which I don't know why it is circulating, because the fans are off. So let's turn those on. I didn't flip the circuit breakers. There we go. Now we can turn those on. Um, so yeah, we also have OVB dumps for these, and ISO valves, and cross feeds, and everything like that. But really all we needed to do was turn on the fans, and then that's all. Um, that lights off, and there we go. We are powered up. Um, so, like I said, the Dragonfly is a tug, which means it's meant to just move things around in orbit. And here they gave us two little modules to play with. Um, here we have a radar system, or vicinity awareness system is, I think, the official term. And it has variable range, so let's move that down to 50 meters. And this one is looking at it from above, so we have one of them behind us and one of them much farther behind us. And this is looking at it from the side with the right facing forward. So we have one of them slightly above us and one of them slightly more above us. Um, so we can change this. I'm going to translate backward to uh, um, get back in front of these. Let's hit visual for this and that. And I will actually hit custom. Okay. And module 1A, I think, is... Actually, I'm going to use 1B. Let's edit that. Angular velocity. It has some angular velocity. I don't like that. Let's kill it all. There we go. It's extremely hard to dock with something with angular velocity. So let's go back into the tug. Um, so that's the one that we didn't kill angular velocity. I do not want that. So let's do target 1B, I believe. And I want dock 2. So docking is same as everything else. And the reason I'm actually docking is to show you something that does not work for me. So right now, I'm actually going to go outside. When I say translate upward, um, or I guess that's down. Anyway, when I translate a certain direction, you notice that only these are firing. Because the center of gravity of our um, dragonfly is directly between... Man, I'm upside down somehow. There we go. <laughs> it's directly between... Uh, this RCS and that RCS, which means um, in order to do all our translating, only these need to fire. So you may wonder what this boom out here is for, and that is for the um, CG offset, which you can see here in the panel. And to really talk about that, I have to dock with this. Um, I am approaching it very slowly, but I have already used up a lot of time in summarizing and powering up, so I'm going to do what I like to call the extremely fast docking maneuver, which is approach it at a billion meters per second and hope you have it lined up when the time comes. Uh, and we do have it lined up. Bam! So we have successfully docked, and we are pulling forward. So now we have this um, module attached to our face. And as you would expect, this changes the center of gravity. So if, so our center of gravity is somewhere over here. So if we were to say translate upward, which is moving in this direction, this bottom RCS rocket would have to fire. But if our center of gravity is over here and no longer directly between these, you'd expect us to rotate around this center of gravity. And you'd be right, um, which is what this docking boom is for. For us to translate directly upward, you would have to put a little bit of force on this um, top port in order to compensate for the rotation. And when it's all powered up, it should do this automatically. Here you see this auto and manual switch. Um, but the offset doesn't work for me. So let's try to translate up. I don't know if you can see this, 
um, the field of stars around us is rotating. But if you don't believe me, here you can see an attitude indicator, our pitch. We are pitching. Let's go outside and see in real life. So, as I had predicted, as we translate up, we're rotating around some center of gravity. Which I don't know where it is, don't ask me. But, this is not a good thing. And it makes docking with this second thing incredibly difficult. Which it shouldn't be, because this thing should take care of it. But it doesn't. And even if I were to switch it to manual and move it up um, to a ridiculous distance, like way, way, way out farther than it needs to be. Like here, if we go back outside, you can see that um, this module is about as long as the um, Dragonfly itself, slightly shorter. So if I move this out, come on, there we go. If I move this out to well beyond an extra length of the dragonfly, which actually I believe the stats of the length of the dragonfly are in here. Uh, I have the manual in print right in front of me, so um, I don't want electrical power system and distribution. I don't want power reactant storage and distribution, and nope, I don't have the stats apparently. So there we go. 21 meters. So, logically, if it thinks our center of gravity is somewhere out here, then it should overcompensate, and trying to translate upward would mean we, instead of shifting, instead of tilting um, downward, we should tilt upward, because it's overcompensating. But we try to translate upward, and we still move down. It's the same direction, and as you can see out here, this RCS is not firing at all to compensate for anything. So the CG offset is not working. And if you do know how to make it work, I would be all ears. Um, I just think it's something that was lost between, or somewhere between now and when the Dragonfly was initially a part of Orbiter, which was somewhere in 2002, I believe. Another thing that doesn't work are these antenna. Um, so yeah, that is our dragonfly. Sorry this video took a lot longer than I expected, but that is it. I will see you in the next video where I will be doing Shuttle A scenarios.